All right, let's dive right in, shall we? Today we're tackling multimodal AI. Multimodal AI. Yeah, no, at first glance, it does sound a bit like, you know, something straight out of those sci-fi movies. Yeah. Robots yeah. taking over the whole shebang. Hmm. But honestly, this is way more interesting. Definitely. And potentially far more impactful, I'd say, than those Hollywood scenarios. What makes multimodal AI so captivating is it's not just another tech buzzword. It's a whole different way of approaching and building artificial intelligence. And to help us wrap our heads around it, we're looking at this article by Lynn Frederick de Souza. They're the founder and director of his purity, published just recently, September 4th, 2024, on Medium. Great article. Okay, so D'Souza calls these multimodal AI models, get this, supercharged brain power for machines. What's that even mean? Supercharged brain power, huh? Yeah, I mean, are we talking like robots doing our taxes level intelligence or what? Well, maybe not taxes specifically, but um, think about it this way. A computer that doesn't just process data, it actually understands it, like we do, you know? Connecting text, images, sounds, even sensor readings, all to form a complete picture. Okay, so instead of just reading a recipe, yeah. it's like this AI can watch us bake, yeah. smell the bread, even feel the dough. Precisely. That's the general idea. D'Souza uses this analogy. It's like a tech-savvy team member solving a puzzle, right? They can look at a blueprint listen to what the engineer's explaining, analyze data all at the same time. That's the kind of multitasking, multidimensional power we're dealing with here. That's actually, that's a really good analogy. I get it now. But why is this such a big deal? Like, what makes this a game changer? Well, consider this. For the longest time, AI, it's been limited to just one type of data at a time. But the real world, it's messy. It's multimodal. We experience it with all our senses, right? Yeah. Totally. It's like the difference between just reading about a concert and actually being there, feeling the bass, seeing the lights. Exactly. And this ability to process all that information, but from all those different sources, that's what lets multimodal AI tackle these really complex tasks, things that traditional AI, well, it just couldn't handle before. So it's not just about more data. It's about smarter data then. Precisely. Smarter data. And this is where things get even more interesting, especially when we start looking at fields like aerospace and defense, which is what this article really digs into. By those fields in particular, what's so special about aerospace and defense? Well, imagine the sheer volume of information they're dealing with every single second. Satellite imagery, we've got radar signals, all that sensor data coming in from aircraft. You name it, it's a constant flood overwhelming even for the brightest minds to handle. It's like they're trying to drink from a fire hose of data. Exactly, a fire hose. And that's where multimodal AI steps in. It doesn't just take a sip from that fire hose. It analyzes the composition of the water, figures out its source, and tells you exactly where to direct the flow for maximum impact. So it's not about replacing all those human analysts. It's more like giving them a seriously superpowered assistant. Exactly. It's about augmenting our human capabilities, hmm. you know, letting us make faster, much more informed decisions, but in those really high stakes situations. Okay, now I see why this is a big deal, but I'm still curious, how does it actually work in practice? Let's take an example that Zusa highlights. Predictive maintenance. Predictive maintenance, okay. Imagine your car knowing it needs an oil change before it breaks down. That's the power of it. Wait, so instead of relying on a schedule or something, the AI is constantly monitoring, analyzing data from all the car's sensors. Right, exactly that. It's looking at things like engine temperature, tire pressure, even your driving habits, and it compares all that to historical data and these super complex algorithms, all to predict potential issues before they even have a chance to happen. So it's like having a crystal ball, but for your car, or in this case, maybe for like a multi-million dollar aircraft. Exactly. A crystal ball for complex machinery. And the implications of that, well, they're massive, especially when we're talking about aerospace and defense, where even small malfunctions can have, well, catastrophic consequences. It's not just about saving money. It's about saving lives, potentially. Absolutely. And that's just one example. We haven't even touched on autonomous systems yet or cybersecurity, which are just as fascinating. Okay, now you've got me hooked. <laughs> Let's talk autonomous systems. Are we talking like self-driving cars or something even wilder? Think, uh, think less self-driving cars and more along the lines of, well, drones, for example. Drones that can navigate all those crazy environments, identify targets, even make decisions all in real time and all thanks to multimodal AI. Okay, now that's definitely edging into sci-fi territory for me. But hold on, are we really saying AI could be making like 
life or death decisions on a battlefield? It, well, it's not quite that simple. See, D'Souza, they make a really important point in this article. Humans, we're not being replaced here. We're being elevated, you could say, to a more strategic role. So it's more a partnership then. Like AI handles those split second reactions, the raw data analysis, while humans, we set the strategy, the big picture. Precisely. Think of it like this. The AI is the co-pilot. It's providing these real-time insights, recommendations even, but the human pilot, they're still firmly in control. They make the final call. Always. Right. That makes a lot more sense. So it's like heading this, I don't know, super-powered co-pilot, mm. one that can analyze all that radar data, flag any potential threats, even suggest evasive maneuvers, all while you, the pilot, you can focus on, well, not crashing, basically. Exactly. And this whole shift, you know, towards human AI collaboration, it's not limited to just the battlefield. I mean, imagine surgeons, right? They could use this tech to analyze medical images in real time during surgery. Or architects, they could simulate how strong a building is before even laying a single brick. So it's all about giving humans better tools so they can make better, faster decisions across all kinds of fields. Exactly. But of course, there's always a but, isn't there? With all this reliance on AI, it does bring up a whole new set of well, challenges, especially when it comes to cybersecurity. Right, because if we're going to have AI piloting drones, assisting with surgery, we really need to know those systems are secure, untouchable. Exactly. And that's where this whole multimodal aspect, it becomes even more critical. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah. How does having all those different data sources actually make AI more secure? Well, think about it. The way we've done cybersecurity, traditionally, it's often been about looking for anything weird, anomalies, in a single data stream. Network traffic, user behavior, that sort of thing. So a hacker, if they were really good, they could, what, mask their activity to blend in with all that data. Exactly. It's a game of cat and mouse. But with multimodal AI, you're analyzing so much more. It's like you're not just looking at one data stream. You're looking at multiple sources all at the same time. It creates this incredibly detailed, nuanced understanding of what's normal and what's not. So instead of just a security camera, right. it's like having a guard who can see, hear, even smell if something's off. That's a great way to put it. And because multimodal AI can connect those dots between all those senses, all that data, it makes it that much harder for the bad guys to hide. So it's not just about spotting the threats faster. It's about understanding what those threats mean. Mm. Their context, their intent, what? right? Exactly. Sousa actually gives this really compelling example in their article. Imagine there's a network breach, right? A hacker gets in accesses sensitive data. Traditional systems, they might not even notice until it's too late, until the damage is done. But with multimodal AI, you could theoretically catch it as it's happening. Yeah. Isolate those systems, prevent the data from being compromised. Exactly. And it's not even just about reacting to threats. It's about getting ahead of them. You see, by analyzing all that historical data, identifying patterns, multimodal AI can actually help us predict what the bad guys might do next stay one step ahead. It's like it's like a security system that actually learns from every attack and adapts to new threats as they pop up. Precisely. And that's what's so incredible about this whole thing. It's constantly evolving, learning, improving, making our digital world a safer place, hopefully. This is, I mean, it's a lot to process, but it's fascinating stuff. But I got to ask, with AI becoming this powerful, how do we know it's being used responsibly, ethically? Yeah. What's to stop this tech from being used for, well, Bad stuff. That's, I mean, those are the big questions, aren't they? I mean, it's one thing for AI to tell me I need an oil change. But when we're talking about, like, life or death stuff, it gets kind of scary, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And D'Souza, they really hit on this throughout the article. The ethics of it all, of multimodal AI, that's the big one. We can't just build this amazing technology. We have to build it responsibly. That's crucial. Okay, so how do we do that? Are there, like rules, yeah. you know, regulations in place, something to make sure AI is used ethically, especially when we talk about defense? Well, that's where it gets tricky. This tech, it's so new and it's evolving so fast. Honestly, it's kind of outpacing a lot of the you know, legal frameworks and stuff. That's why it's so important to be having these conversations right now about the ethical side before things get even more, well, complicated. It's like we almost need a whole new set of ethics, <laughs> but just for dealing with AI, right? In a way, yeah. Things like bias and algorithms. Right. We got to watch out for that. And the potential for misuse, obviously. Then there's the whole question of, well, what happens to society when machines are making decisions that humans used to make? Big question. Yeah, because if we're not careful, we could end up in a situation where the AI is making decisions, but it's based on 
like bad data yeah. or it's just repeating the same biases we already have. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to have a lot of different voices in the room, right? It can't just be the tech people building this stuff. We need ethicists, folks who understand society, philosophers even. They got to be working right alongside those engineers and coders. It's like we need a whole new type of expert, someone who yeah. understands how the AI works, but also gets all those ethical implications. It's a lot. It is. And like I said, we're just starting to have these conversations. But it's not all doom and gloom, right? Suzo, while they acknowledge the risks, they're also very clear about the potential. I mean, the potential for multimodal AI to really solve some of our biggest problems. So it's not just about, like, killer robots and hackers then? Not even close. Think about medicine, right? Multimodal AI analyzing those medical scans, but with, like superhuman accuracy, finding diseases earlier, treating them more effectively, or how about smart cities? I mean, really smart cities, AI that can unsnarl traffic, clean up pollution, even make our streets safer. Taking all the good stuff AI offers and actually using it to, I don't know, make the world better, safer, just make things work better in general. Exactly. That's the exciting part. This technology, it has the potential to change everything. Healthcare, transportation, how our kids learn, even how we have fun. It's huge. Dezus have called it a game changer. And it really seems like this isn't just another tech trend. It's way bigger. It's like a fundamental shift. How we use tech, how we understand the world even. It's a lot to take in. It really is. So as we wrap up here, I want you to, well, keep thinking about this. What role does AI play in your life right, right now? Yep. And how might that change in the next few years? Because yep. it will. It definitely will. It's a lot to process, but it's important stuff. So until next time, keep those questions coming, keep exploring, and we'll keep diving deep into this wild world of tech.